from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. On today's show, Bo Levi Mitchell speaks to us about getting in two quarters of work against the BC Lions. Coach O discusses his thoughts on his team's performance in the loss Friday night. Tim White talks about his big game, and Coach Sal joins the show to break down the Tie Cats battle with BC. It's Monday, October 16th, 2023, and you're listening to Tie Cats today. What a game at Tim Hortons Field Friday night. A back and forth matchup, a really offensive battle. The result didn't go the Ticats way, losing by one final field goal, 33-30. to But they shouldn't be upset about their performance and effort. It was a fun game to watch. They were in it right till the end. We had no idea who was going to win this game until that final field goal when BC just pulled ahead in the last seconds of the game. Coach O spoke about the game and his team's efforts following the loss. Uh, it just seemed like one of those games that whoever had the ball at the end was had the best opportunity. And they had the ball. We didn't... You know, we we got to find a way to, to make the clock expire there at that point in time. But hey, at the end of the day, you know, we battled back. It was, uh, you know, a rough start. Proud of the effort, uh, disappointed in the result. What can you say about Bo tonight and, and having two quarters of work and what you saw from him? Yeah, we had a plan. We were going to let Bo go for two quarters and start come out after halftime and, and take that first series. You know, I think he'd want the, the one pass back, obviously, there. But thought he responded. And, and took us down there and, and made it a ball game. I liked our response before the half. Uh, I thought it was important we come out, you know, in the second half. You know, Bo started the series just to go through that routine. And then uh, Matt came in and did a hell of a job also, and, and we scored and made it a ball game. Yeah, we're definitely we're definitely depleted. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know what it'll look like exactly. Uh, it probably won't look the same, you know. Uh, you know, it was we already had to, to dig deep here tonight, and uh, I thought those guys did a – you know, Patrick Burke and, you know, Cross was in there and, and did a decent job. You know, we had to move Chris Edwards to halfback. And that's that's part of the game. Uh, it's something that's hard to prepare for, but I like the way we responded. I uh, really don't have any idea what it'll look like. Uh, this The bye is hitting us at the right time. Yeah, he, he slung the ball around there, and, and that was fine. We didn't, we didn't mind that. It was about keeping him in bounds. Um, there was a second left, so there wasn't, wasn't enough time. So, yeah, credit him. He, he, he zipped it around there. Uh, we were willing to give those up. Yeah, again, the effort, you know, I thought we got after the quarterback earlier. I thought we were, you know, uh, some great individual efforts, a little bit of scheme early on. You know, uh, I thought Vernon did actually a good job of taking a couple sacks and not forcing the ball. You kind of wish that he'd throw some of those, but uh, I thought we did a decent job there. And then, uh, you know, we didn't quite pressure him as much in the second half. Um, it just, you know, we, we didn't make enough plays. I thought we had some... It's not the total amount of penalties, it's the, the timing of them. I just, you know, we, Schultz gets in there, we get called for a hold. Um, we have one, a big interception where it would put us in field goal range right away. Uh, we have a blindside block there or whatever was called. Uh, we got to clean those things up if you, if you hope to advance. You can't make those mistakes uh, when you're heading into the playoffs or elimination games. That was Coach O. Bo Levi Mitchell got in a little bit more work in this one. He had those two quarters and the one drive to open up the second half. And once again, looked very good. He went 13 for 19. He had two touchdowns and kept this Ticats team in the game while he was playing. This is what we really want to see heading into playoffs. And Bo is looking better and better each time he enters the field. He spoke following the game about getting in more reps against BC and more. Yeah, it felt good, man. I was uh, excited about it. You know, I think uh, even when we got the rough and the punter there, I, I, I put the helmet on and tried to go back in. I knew I was trying to take me out to the first drive, but once I saw the rough and the punter, I was like, yeah, I want to get back in there and help us score this touchdown. But, um, you know, full faith and, and trust in Matt. Obviously, you watched him ball out again tonight. Um, just feel, feels great to be a part of a special quarterback room. Um, but, yeah, for myself individually, it felt, felt good to get out there. Matt kind of mentioned it was almost like an offense versus offense, defense versus defense. So what can you say about your offense's ability to go back and forth with BC tonight in, in such a close game? I think we've proven, you know, over the last little bit um, that we're a dangerous team. And when we're locked into details and executing our offense the way that we know how, um, you know, we can be scary. I mean, as long as we understand, you know, what Oak keeps preaching is it good play, bad play, doesn't matter, on to the next one, right? So um, I think playoff implication-wise, understanding, you know, from a guy that's been there a lot is understand the plays that are going to lose you games in playoffs, right? A pick early for a touchdown. Um, already having big plays on the board and having bad penalties that take them off. 
right? So those are things we're going to learn from on film. You know, we've, we did them early in the year. We got rid of them for a really long time. Um, you know, they, they reared their head again tonight. So, again, it's a good reminder. You know, hope it doesn't cost us a game, you know, again here late. But um, it's a good reminder for us for playoffs. Yeah, I, I mean, they felt great. I think, uh, you know, staying process driven and understanding what it takes to be successful as an offense and, and you know, for myself is keeping that process driven mindset of just, hey, man, execute the play for what it is. You know, I had the one play early and, and Scott said, hey, just go through your reads. You know, just doesn't overreact about it. You know, doesn't say, hey, you can't do that. Just, hey, go through your reads, right? Like the, the offense will work. Go through your reads. It's going to be great. Um, and the times to, you know, innovate will happen. You know, what happened on one of the touchdowns early. Um, and it's just, yeah, just, I think just continue to see things for what they are every single play. You know, process as much information as you can uh, pre-snap. And then, um, you know, when it leads to touchdowns, it shows, you know, we understand and know what we're doing detail-wise as, as an entire group. Yeah, I mean, I, I, hey, again, I think uh, I've played a lot of football, and whatever Coach O and Scott decide, that's what I'm going to do. Like, I'm ready and prepared to play for the entire game. We've got a bye week now, so I'm going to get my body completely ready, um, even ahead of it where it is now. And uh, mentally, I'm going to be ready to go from now until the Great Cup and play every snap. That was Bo Levi Mitchell. The number one target once again was Tim White, and he put up big numbers in this game, finishing with 112 yards receiving, two touchdowns, and was such a threat all game long, causing headaches for this BC defense. He spoke following the loss about the season he's been having and being a top receiver in the league yet again. I felt good. Uh, it hurts to lose. You know, it's something that I feel like it's a good situation because we know what we need to get better at. Uh, but, you know, I felt good overall tonight. You've had a few quarterbacks this season, but do you feel like you kind of mesh with any quarterback? We've seen you play well with Schiltz. We've seen you play well with Powell and same with Bo. Do you feel, no matter who's in, that you feel comfortable out there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, throughout the week, throughout the season, you know, I feel like I get a lot of catches from all of the quarterbacks, and uh, we continue to talk, you know, when they're in the huddle or when they're out the huddle. And during walkthroughs, I'm making sure I'm getting my catches from all of them. Yeah, personally, I would want to play. You know, that's just, I feel like, in my nature. Uh, but, you know, whatever the, the coaches decide and everything like that, I would, you know, I would respect. But um, I want to play for sure. And I think it will be a great opportunity to go up there after a bye week and play, you know, at their home and then go back and play at their home again. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of belief as well. And just understanding that little things may be different. You know, Bo like, may like to throw a certain ball where Matt may like to throw a different, you know, type of ball. So it just takes us being able to adjust on the fly and being able to make those adjustments in the game when things may look a little bit different. And then at the end of the day, it's just make our play. Yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing is just uh, the penalties, you know, uh, getting rid of the penalties in certain situations. And obviously you can get better in all situations throughout the game. Uh, and uh, that's really the main thing. I know winning's priority number one for you, but does being in such a close race for that number one in receiving yards this season play any factor in wanting to play against Montreal? Um, no, I think, it, I think it'll be a great opportunity to get up there with my team and just uh, be able to compete at their field. We haven't played there yet this year, so I feel like, you know, getting used to the turf, getting used to the, the, the lights, all of that is very important. You know, of course, I'm uh, very competitive, but uh, whatever the team decides, I'll, re I'll respect that. Joining me on today's show, as always, is Coach Sal to break down the Ticats' 33-30 to loss to the BC Lions. Coach, it was a back-and-forth matchup, a fun game to watch. Unfortunately, didn't end the way the Ticats were hoping. But but what did you see in this game, and, and what were your initial thoughts on on the performance for the Ticats? Well, Braden, I, I thought that was as gutty a performance as, as I've seen in, in a long time. You know, it's so tough when you start behind the eight ball in that first quarter with that pick six. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they had to climb their way out of that, which they were able to do. But that that uh, tells me that this team's got a lot of uh, a lot of moxie about it, and, and uh, they will do well, I think, in the playoffs. It was an exciting game to watch. We we wanted to see a Tie Cats win, but I believe that was probably the most exciting game we've seen all season. It really showed how gutty this Tie Cats team is, especially against such a strong BC offense. But they were able to go back and forth. I want to start with. Bo Levi Mitchell, he goes 13 for 19, 135 yards, two touchdowns, and, and he does have that pick six. What did you see from Bo in, in that first half and, and the work he got? Well, take away the, the pick six where it was just a poor throw 
where he didn't see uh, the defender. I don't even know if he saw his own receiver on yeah. that particular one, but take that out of there. He had some great throws after that. He made some super plays, uh, showed the same kind of uh, player we knew him to be. I think the touch pass he made to White, for the touchdown was outstanding. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a kind of a touch pass that you have to have from a veteran quarterback. And, and he showed that, uh, again, you know, uh, when you think about it, he gives way to Matthew Schultz and, and Matthew has just done such a great job. I think, uh, 14 to 19, 180 yards and a TD yeah. and a real gutty performance. I mean, he, he, he sparked the team when he came in at the halftime, and uh, not not to say that Bo wasn't doing well, but that was the plan to get Bo out after two quarters and let Matthew uh, carry the load. Yeah, and he was able to do stuff on the ground as he does, and and, and he he really sparked that offense. And Bo, I think, did excellent as well. We kind of have, I guess, you could say a little bit of a good problem here because you have two quarterbacks that are playing very very good. I guess the biggest question is. What do the Ticats or what should the Ticats do for the playoffs? Who should be the starting quarterback? Because I, I think it could go either way. Well, you know, at this point, uh, I think you're going to start Bo. That mm -hmm. looks to me to be the plan. And if Bo is going well, he may go beyond two quarters. He may go three quarters. He may go the whole game. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can't disregard the fact that when Schultz comes in, he sets the team alive and, and sparks everything. And so, you know, the, the way it's worked out, even with the loss to BC, the way it's worked out with Bo starting the ball game and then Matthew coming in and, and carrying on from there seems to be uh, one of the things that uh, that has worked for the team. Now, I, I would hesitate and hate to see him get into uh, a series for Bo, a series for Matt, uh, a series for Bo. I don't think that's the way to go. I think once a player comes out of the game, barring injury, uh, you go with your the hot hand. It's almost like uh, they're taking a notes from baseball. You got the closing pitcher, Matthew Schultz. He's he's coming in to close out the games. Both starting the games. Both of them have played well in and and especially playing a half a game because a lot of times you come into a game like as a quarterback. If you come into a game in the third quarter, you might be a little cold. You know these guys have been playing the whole time, but but Schultz comes in, and he comes out of the gate flying in the in the last two times where he's came in in the second half or or in the second quarter last week. Tim White was the number one target again. Big performance from him. What did you see from him? Well, I, I think he's he's become the go to player uh, for this team, and he sets up other players uh, with his ability to take the top off the defense and to get beyond people. And, and he shows the the strength uh, of character where he'll make the tough catch. Mm -hmm. he, he, you know, he doesn't shy away from the contact. Uh, and, and that's a great uh, tribute to have for a smallish receiver. But I think White is, is, uh, is as I said, the go-to guy. And as long as they can protect the quarterback and give him time, which, again, that pocket was very nice for Bo yes. uh, most of the time. I, I thought they did an excellent job up front. And the two tackles did a good job. Betts, the number one sacker in the league, only got one sack in that game. We dropped back 38 times. Yeah. And it was only two sacks, one early in the ball game and one from Betts uh, later on. So the line and, and Butler did a yep. great job. Butler now reminds me, and, and you probably won't remember uh, Troy Davis. Okay. Uh, but Troy Davis uh, from 2002 – uh, to 2004 was a thousand yard running back in each of those years. Yep. And at the same time was a devastating blocker. He could, he could handle himself in the backfield. And I see Butler doing the same thing uh, that Davis did. And I think it's a great comparison when you look back and research uh, Troy Davis. So Butler uh, 114 yards again in this game, uh, both running and receiving. Yeah, he's that dual threat guy. He's been doing it all season. And and especially in a game where you have injuries at receiver like they did when you're missing Bayless and you have that option with Butler. I want to go to defense here. I think the play of the game, pretty simple to say, was Dexter Lawson and that interception. But what did you think about that pick? I mean, I, in my opinion, I might be a little biased here, but that's the play of the year, I think. It, it was a tremendous catch of the ball. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. You know, one-handed catch in the end zone. Uh, you know, 
usually when you catch the ball in the end zone like that on an interception, you would stay there yep. and get the ball out on a 25 yard line. He got up off the ground and ran 85 yards. And if it were not for the blind side block on that play, Hamilton would have been in great field position as it ends up that mm -hmm. block, that, that blind side block cost them. They were back on their own four yard line and had to, again, uh, rely on Schultz to move them down the field. There was some penalties for the Ticats, and they've been better the second half of the season, but but they had some penalty issues in that game. Do you have any idea of why that is, or it's just one of those games? Well, if you look at it in the uh, in the first half, they had zero penalties. Yeah. In the second half, they had two major penalties mm -hmm. and seven total penalties. The two blind side blocks were, were ones that took uh, – basically uh field position away from the uh, the tiger cats mm -hmm. and you can't have that uh, you know the old adage is if you can see the guy's name on the back of his jersey don't block it yep and, and on blind side if you're facing your own end zone don't block it just stand there as a statue and you know um, hope the guy gets by you montreal back to back weeks you have this bye week what are you using this bye week for as a player as a player, you got to get away. You got to rest. You got to get your mind straight, and then you got to get your body straight. If, if you're one of those injured guys that has a potential to come back, and that was a major factor in this ball game, the secondary injuries, mm -hmm. the guys who were hurt in the secondary, uh, those guys have a potential to get back in in two weeks' time uh, to be ready to play. So, you know, they may not be able to go home. That that may be an issue where You've got to stay in the training room and you've got to get your body ready to play. Yes. But overall, what you want to do is you want to divorce yourself from the game for a little while. Just just let everything settle down. Uh, and you know where you stand and, and you know who you're going to play. Yeah. Uh, so get your mind in, in uh, form that uh, ready to go in the next uh, couple of weeks. This game, this final regular season game with Montreal, how do you would you approach it as a coach and and who's going to play and kind of decipher what they should be doing here in terms of of starters? Every able-bodied person should play in this ball game. Yeah, okay. every starter should play in this ball game. Everyone who uh, has any uh, nicks or or hurts, you can hold them out. Mm -hmm. But if he's able-bodied, you got to play him because you want to demonstrate. Uh, to Montreal that you will beat them on their own home field and put that doubt in their mind. Now, we've already lost two games to them. It's yep. time to turn that around and win two games against them. What's different about this Ticats team? It's been a while since they've played Montreal, but what's different about this team than, than when we saw them play Montreal back a month and a half ago or whatever it's been? Well, on the offensive side, uh, you know, they've made great strides. They've brought themselves to a level – where they can compete with any defense uh, on the field. Mm -hmm. And BC has a good defense. Don't don't get me wrong. So does Saskatchewan. But in both cases, they were able to move the football. And, and that is uh, what you've got to have. I, I think the kicking game with Legio is, is really, you know, he was solid again in this ball game. Yep. And we got to give some some kadoos to White up uh, the long snapper. Yep. He's put the ball on the mark every time. Well, I haven't seen a bad snap. Uh, come out of him uh, yet. So that part is good. Uh, uh, McAllister's doing a good job of returning the football. And, and that goes to, uh, you know, the one hit he took in that ball game. Yeah. Big uh, hit. I can't imagine the officials missing that call. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a, a devastating head to head hit mm -hmm. uh, in, in the protection of that player is, is very, very important, but I like the way McAllister's playing. On the defensive side, you know, since Labor Day, we have not, uh, we have only suited up six players in the secondary. That was a mistake. Uh, that was a disappointment to me. And that disappointment goes back to uh, the Tiger Cat operations program. Yep. The minute they had the two injuries that they had at Delicay and uh, I forgot the other that, that went on the uh, six game. Yeah. Uh, the two guys that went on the six game, Elliot, at that point, you've got to bring in some D-backs. We only have one D-back on the practice roster, and, and he was not ready to play. 
-hmm. And so that that uh, really put this team in this game in a very big bind. Yeah. So that that's got to be corrected. Uh, I I like the way the secondary was playing up to that point, uh, but when you ran out of bodies and you had to put uh, Cosentanis uh, on the corner and then Cross on the corner and then Edwards at the halfback, uh, you know, and bring the rookie in Burke to yep. play uh, in there, uh, that really hurt the team when they had to play some sticky covers, some some man to man covers late in the game where VA was getting the ball underneath and we were doing a poor job of tackling those receivers. Mm -hmm. That's when we needed to be able to change up and bring the cover down tight uh, on man for man situations and, and make a difference. But uh, we couldn't do it because everybody was in a different position. For a while there, it seemed like uh, no matter what, who we put on the field at DB, they were getting injured. It, it was injury after injury. And that's tough against an offense run by, Vernon Adams and, and with that receiving core that BC has, which is arguably the best, if not one of the best in the league. Coach, if you can, maybe a couple game balls if you have some for the, for the game. Well, uh, again, I, I think that White has to be the game ball uh, in my mind because of what he did uh, with the two touchdowns and, and with the way he ran his routes and did the things that he did. I, I think that uh, he shows that he is the number one receiver He's over a thousand yards now uh, in receiving. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, I only want to give one, and that one goes to White. I think that would be my game ball too. So, Coach, big game coming up here, or big games coming up. The final game of the season, and then the Tie Cats are on the road in a playoff game here. For those young guys who who are in, in their first CFL playoff, or they're going to be in their first CFL playoff game, what should they keep in mind once we get to this point, and, and when the games mean so much? Well, I think the younger players need to uh, buddy up with one of the veterans. They need to listen to the veterans. Even the veterans that are on the injured list mm -hmm. can provide some insight as to what happens in, in the playoff games. Everything becomes so much faster, so much more intense in those games that they have to be uh, ready for that. And the best way to get ready for that is to talk to a veteran who's been there before who understands exactly what's going to happen. Well, Coach, some great advice. As always, it's great chatting with you. Our next game here is coming up in two weeks, so we'll have you back on whenever the Ticats play Montreal again. But once again, Coach Sal, thanks for being on the show today. You're more than welcome, Brighton. Talk to you again. Big thanks to Coach Sal, Tim White, Bo Levi Mitchell, and Coach O for being on the show today. Before we go, Ticats fans, the annual Hamilton Santa Claus Parade will take place in downtown Hamilton in the heart of the 2023 Grey Cup Festival. This year, there will be a football twist with the addition of CFL cheer teams, and the Grey Cup trophy will also be in attendance. It's the Hamilton Santa Claus Parade and Grey Cup Parade presented by WeatherTech, and it's happening on Saturday, November 18th. For more information, go to greatcupfestival.ca slash events. Going to be a great time, and Santa Claus himself will be there, so make sure to check that out. That's all the time for me today. I want to thank you for listening to Ticats today. Cats today.